All right, so I'm Breeze. This is the MMA Breeze show. Today we have Brittany Elkin. Brittany, I just want to start it off light. You know, how did you get into to martial arts and when did you start competing? I know I read that you got interested when you saw some fights come to Denver and you were 21. Were you already competing in, in sports at that point or uh, was this just something something unique that caught your eye? I don't know where you read that. Um, I did come to Denver to like do MMA, um, but I started... I started competing about at 21 and I was bartending actually uh, into CrossFit really heavy. And um, there was local fights. Um, it was Ring Wars in Gillette, Wyoming. And the owner um, was a local, like a local fighter. His name was Matt DeWolf, like locally famous. And he brought in Spencer Fisher for like the meet and greet for that night. And those two ended up talking to me saying that I kind of had the look and then you know, I was 21 and I was like, yeah, I could go fight. And like, that was my um, like invite to fighting. And then I was in the cage within three months in an amateur bout. So it was kind of an interesting right fun invite. A natural. OK, cool, cool. So I know you fought for a couple different organizations. Now you're here fighting for the PFL. There's a lot of uh, spadaz going on with the PFL right now. What uh, what intrigues you the most about this organization? Well, I have fought for the PFL before. I fought Kayla Harrison, um, one of the animal. Uh, I got to fight her, and they they were incredible back then. Um, did you say what excites me about this organization? Organization is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, yeah. I mean, compared to um, the rest, I love, of I love that they're like they're they're doing the tournament, um, keeping you know keeping keeping a ball rolling with the with the fighters and like an in like a. I don't know, a career more sense. I feel like I think everybody has a career. I'm trying to find my words for that. But the tournament aspect, I think, really just is kind of fun um, to follow a fighter throughout their process. Um, and then I love that they're giving, you know, um, nice purses. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they do the 155 division, um, something I dreamed about for 10 years. I think that's awesome that Ray does that. Ray himself has one, gone through a whole fight career. So I think he has like, a lot of personalization and making it fun. And then I was really well taken care of, not just because I fought Kayla, but uh, the athletes next to me was, you know, we were, we were taking care of our personal needs well. So I was like, okay, this is an organization I'd really like to fight for. You know what I mean? So, um, and yeah, when they asked me back, it was easy to say yes. Um, so they're good. Yeah, you know, speaking of uh, of uh, Kayla Harrison, you were able to welcome her in her debut in mixed martial arts. I know you're doing the same thing here with Clarissa Shields. What did you learn about uh, about that matchup facing a specialist, and has it prepared you at all for taking on another one? Um, so when you're facing an unknown person, um, you know, you are facing the unknown. You're going to be the one that can either expose or or like you know what I mean? You're, you're going against a bunch of theories, you know, um, you could say hypothetically, she may do this or hypothetically because of her background, her footwork could be like this, you know, um, the experience it gives me is, you know, you got to stay confident in your, um, your specialties. And then, um, you know, cause, uh, I feel that stylistically I can be either a problem or, you know, like Kayla was a grappler, um, grappler fighting grappler. She was a better grappler. We won or she won that day. I meant to say, um, we figured that out that day. Um, but like stylistically in this, um, I don't take anything. Uh, I don't underestimate her in any way. She's a champion athlete and she has an athletic thing. So, um, for, for like experience on that. I'm not underestimating anything, treating her as a genuine athlete. And then, um, but also staying true to me this time a little bit. Um, it's hard to expose a person like Kayla. She's obviously just dominated so many people in that class, um, which is kind of nice because then I'm not the only one. But um, <laughs> with Clarissa, I'm taking a new take on it. Um, you know, I'm a purist too, in a sense. Um, I do tons and tons of groundwork and, and years of grit in the other, you know, where she did years of stand up. So just experience is going to try to make me true to myself on that.
That's a, that's a great point that I actually wanted to bring up to you. You know, you've been grappling in the trenches for a while now and she's so new to all of that and, and the clinch work and everything else that comes with mixed martial arts. Are you, but you know, she's training right now with, uh, with um, Jackson Wink and all those folks, Holly Holmes. Are you, are you going into this confident uh, about the exchanges on the ground or like you said, she's a world-class athlete. Do you think that uh, you have to respect her game there as well? I mean, God, wouldn't it be embarrassing if you didn't respect something? You know what I mean? Um, I think, you know, yeah, I, I do feel very confident. Let me just start out with that. I feel very confident in my positioning. Um, before Ray offered this to me, I was mentally preparing to start getting ready for November ADCC trials. And that was just one of my future goals in grappling. My grappling, I do fe feel far speeds her. But I also feel like, man, I'm going, you know, her striking is way better than mine. So um, confidence is a major on the ground for me. Um, I don't want, you know, um, I'm going to limit my exposures to my weaknesses. Um, and uh, yeah, who, who gives a fuck who you train with? I mean, it does matter. Don't think I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I say that like a, a really like, because I train with incredible athlete world champions too. And um I can name off 10 names that you would know uh, household names that I train with. And I would, you know, in the cage, it's going to be me and Clarissa um, years and years of groundwork. Isn't going to measure up in those five minutes and years and years of striking isn't going to compare to hers. So it's just, you know, we're alone in that cage together. Uh, whoever builds you to the person that you are best to get in that cage is going to matter, but I'm not intimidated by the people that are surrounded because I have great people too. Right on, right on. Yeah, that's that's something I wanted to ask you about because, you know, like you said, she's training with some uh, some big names and you said you're training with some big names. Can you tell us who you're working with in preparation to this bout? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing uh, a temple in Bethlehem. I'm doing some cage work. Um, I am new to the area, so I got the best of the great minds over there in the grappling um, ground. We're doing the cage work and things that benefit me, like you said, clench work or things that I'm great at like takedowns and all those things but from clench or from places that she might have normally found comfort so I have great minds in um the 10th line of Bethlehem and MMA circuit over there that's a huge gym facility in Bethlehem Pennsylvania I'm in Manhattan and I live right next to Unity so I'm doing my pro grappling and four days a week pro grappling circuits with their pro training team um I'm I'm very excited about that I don't know if you know much about Unity it's um under Murillo and yeah, I just like feel very confident. Some of the best grapplers in the world are there and we're all just game planning and like minding. And I'm hearing a bunch of people that are in my circuits and we know each other's abilities and we're in each other's ears of closing distance and, and using um, feints and like-minded. And then I'm doing a lot of striking with Amanda LeVay. She signed with Bellavor Bellator, excuse me. And um, there's a girl uh, from CFFC, it's the champion. And I, gosh, I wish I was a better person. And I remembered her name, but she's there every day and she's gritting with me. Brianna Fasori, my old manager and team captain over at Elevation Fight Team just flew out here for a week. And um, I have a couple other girls flying out through the week, staying at my apartment in Manhattan. So Jay Rabuto's in my corner um, year, like just, you know, and uh, he's out of uh, New Jersey. Uh, a lot of jujitsu people are in my corner. A lot of fighters um, are in my ear. And then I have the MMA team strategizing with me to just be wearing on her and not allowing her ever to feel comfortable. I like that. So, you know, that, that's one thing I want to touch on as well is the, the stand up game for her in boxing is, is a lot different to the mixed martial art uh, landscape right now, where if you, you know, you have a lot of things that she's never seen in competition before. Are you welcoming the stand up with her? Do you have some tricks up your sleeve or are you like, hey, let's get this to the ground as soon as possible? I mean, ultimately, let's like it's no secret that my advantage point is going to be in the ground. I mean, let's like, that's not a game planning secret. Anybody that's mm -hmm. wise enough to follow fighting knows I want to be on the ground and she wants to be standing, right? So those, that's like, yeah, let's go down. I mean, if it happens in 15 seconds, I hope so. Cause then everybody would replay that on Instagram 3 million times. And I would, you know, just be happy about that. Um, I, I do recognize in footage where she's resting or where she's just not engaging. And we, we're, we're recognizing that and trying to recognize that in my sparring partners so that I engage at the right time and I'm most strike, you know, useful. 
I keep saying this over in my head, you know, you don't beat a circle game plan with another circle game plan. You beat a circle game plan with a straight line and we're going to cut through some places where she's vulnerable. Um, I, it's kind of nice that uh, I didn't put up years and years of my MMA fights, except my opponents just put up my losses. So you won't find a lot of footage. I have a lot of, you know, my MMA career wasn't wonderful, but I don't have a ton of footage out there and I just find a ton of benefit of watching hers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, yes, 15 seconds, let's go to the ground. I'm happy. Cool. You know what I mean? Um, her clenches, boxing clenches are a lot different than in MMA clenches. I think that uh, she's either learning that right now or she's going to learn that that night. And so we, we hope, you know, to to use the tools we see, um, available. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, that's, uh, that's a, that's a, a big challenge you have on your plate and I'm, I'm excited to see you go. I know your game and you're accepting of it. It's a little different than the Harrison matchup where, like you said, it's going to be kind of a grappler versus a striker instead of grappler versus grappler. But how much would it mean to you to get past Clarissa and then face Kayla for a rematch and take out both of these hot prospects in MMA? You know, Kayla is, is such a, God, this is such a different fight. So first of all, I feel, I felt, um, Kay so let's talk, first of all, Calissa, I, I took right away, um, just feeling confidence in that. Cause it's too purist. I would break down me and Kayla again. And yes, I would fight Kayla again. I have mad respect for Kayla. We shook hands. I've been watching her. I watch all my opponents after I lose after I win too, you know, I'm just like, I love fighting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Kayla, I would, I will always fight the same person again and try again. Um, because like, how do we all keep just growing and getting better? You know, Kayla has so much ahead of her. I hope to achieve her greatness again one day. And if we ever go again, man, I'm going to game plan and be such an in part of the Uh oh, I think I lost you. Oh, I think it says mute. No, no, it says it, that you got it on mute. Um, oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Famous call coming in, so oh. I was trying to that and uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, if I all I'm trying to say because I've definitely thought about fighting Kayla again. Champions make other champions better, right? Like champions have to stay ahead of champions, right? So Kayla just always has to grow because like she's her, go I imagine her target is number one, right? Just as all of us are. Um, and if I fought Kayla again, I would, I would be totally strategically game planning differently. And um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, iron sharpens iron in a different kind of aspect, but yes, I mean, those are challenges ahead. And that's, um, I mean, that's at the top. So I, I hope to get there again one day. I'm just trying to get um, through this one first. Absolutely. So. And, and, you know, that's a, the great thing about martial arts that you just touched on there is everybody's always growing and, and it's not linear, you know, so it's, it's, uh, you're always going to get a different matchup. Even if you guys would have fought the next day, it would have been a different fight. So the beauty of martial arts, but another thing, you know, you're, you're out of uh, 10th planet, you know, you obviously love grappling. A lot of people didn't fight over 2020, including you, but you were still competing and you did a lot of grappling bouts and, you know, compared to the rest of the folks that are coming back, you know, how much of an advantage do you think that gives you in pure competition? A hundred percent advantage. I mean, we're all fucking freaks. I mean, I, I, it's not just 10 planet people that are freaks. It's just anybody's a freak that's in the fight world and competing. And, you know, like I was crossing those Corona barriers um, and all those stupid tests and all the extra measures that they're taking. Um, I think a month after a month after I was starting to fight a uh, grappling circuit again, um, I was fighting champions like Kendall Roosing. And, and if you follow jujitsu circuit, that's a huge name. And then right after that, I got, I can't even remember. I think it took four or five this year. I'm 19 and nine. I did a subversive challenge, which is a tournament challenge where you, you break down bracketly um, with a uh, uh, one over 80, one under 180. I did the high rollers. So like each one of these require you to walk in the door with a mask on, get a blood test and do these things differently, you know? And I feel like because I've done like nine of them stacked, I don't have those um, heart rate flutters and those concerns. And are we getting through this today? Or what do we have next? Or when do I get to eat? Like, it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. 
you know what I mean? It's just so calm and um, I'm happy to have that experience um, under my belt. You know, I'm just glad that I was still opportunity getting those, those fights and that, that harder time. Yeah, no, right on. And all, all the glory to you for staying in the trenches and competing. That's awesome. Making it happen. Uh, just in a pure, like uh, passion standpoint, you know, what, you know, I know obviously there's more money behind mixed martial arts, but grappling is becoming very popular right now. Like you, you've spoken on a few times in our conversation here, you know, Chel Sonnen has done a lot. There's submission underground and who's number one, you know, what, what, what do you see in the future for yourself and grappling? Are you going to continue to compete while you fight or is that going to kind of be on the back burner and maybe revisit that after the martial arts career? So I, I did 11 years of MMA before and retired and like mentally, physically identity retired. Um, Ray called me himself and it was a huge decision to even take another MMA fight. So I signed a one contract fight. I hope to be great. I hope to be great enough to get a multi-contract fight after it, but I'm not banking on revisiting a huge future career. If it happens, I'm going to welcome it because I love to compete. Right. But those aren't like my dream right now is June 10th. And then the dreams that flood in front of it before it, I'll, I'll make my way through those things. But um, um, for jujitsu in the head is, man, I'm dreaming big. Um, I, I really have some huge things. I am signed up for the trials on ADCC in November. I'm so happy that they picked, you know, that at date. I hope it doesn't cancel. You know, if it cancels, I'll prepare for the future one. Um, I love these bracketing jujitsu tournaments. I was once, uh, trying to get on, on Shug for Ch Chael Sonnen, but they found a better sized opponent because I, uh, at the time was like 180, uh, cause I'm, I'm 5'11", you know, I used to carry my weight a little heavier and I, because I was competing this so much this year, I decided to take it back. So I was lucky enough to like be at 170 when I got this call, um, you know, a healthy 170. Um, so man, the future's big in jujitsu for me. I really see myself going into like combat jujitsu, maybe the Cancun Eddie Bravo jujitsu. I've been trying yeah. to sneak my way in there go back to high rollers and just, you know, try to just be great in there again. Cause it's a fun thing to compete on. And, and, um, I like the EBI rules. I think it's going to make me a better black belt one day. I'm a brown belt now and, and just competing in all the different rule sets just makes you smarter in game planning. So the future's bright for me and I see it shining. Oh, I just took a, a big tournament bracket in Tampa in July. So like, and, okay. and like, um, that's how confident I am that I can do all those things. Um, you know, Clarissa is obviously number one and I've, I can change my mind again, uh, June 11th when we go into to see if I do that later in July. So I just like to look forward at, at least these are my options and this is what I'm going to try to hit. Does either one uh, seem easier to train for? Do you, do you get more gassed up about jujitsu or MMA one over the other? I think it's the opponent, man, because like there's some girls, sweetest girls in the world, first of all, even in MMA, you know, some of them are catty, whatever. <laughs> women are just women. You know what I mean? Um, like some of them I have, I love some of them. And I'm like, I'm gonna fuck that bitch up one day, you know, like I cannot <laughs> wait to get on that girl again. I'm I know I can beat her. Um it really depends because there's a lot of hype in jujitsu. Uh, there's a lot of people that care a lot. You know, there's, it's like a purist thing too, just like, you know, Clarissa has in boxing. So, I mean, what my heart goes to is some of those matches. I care about those seven minutes as much as I care about this fight. This fight right now is, is probably one of the biggest things on, you know, my plate in the last five years, because I love the matchup, you know, women, I, I love to give be to get a part of fighting another Olympic gold medalist, um, striking champion, and then me stylistically being so diversely different. So it's just neat to be a part of for my history of my career. Absolutely. And in your ideal world, would you rather get in there and uh, and finish her quickly, get out, or would you like to just have a dominant performance that shows everybody that you can do that for, you know, 15 minutes? I mean, I think I've already done all those dom. I love, I, I, you know, my daydreams when I'm driving in my car, listening to my music and shit, I I'm beating the shit out of Clarissa for 15 minutes. And I have, you know, all the scars of a warrior. Um, 
And in my daydreams, I also, am, you know, sliding in something slick and, and nobody expected that. And it's just like leaving a wow, I can't wait to see that happen next time, you know? So, um, you know, I'm happy with either I'm daydreaming about both and, um, the, do I think I feel I have to prove fuck? No, I fucking <laughs> broken my orbital and fought blind for two rounds. I, I've broken my arm in, in three places and fought for four minutes after, like I've fought these grit ass fights. Do I love watching a good fight? And do I love being a part of it? Fuck yes. You know, but do I love going in the back room and laughing my ass off? with my best friends about how badass that was yes <laughs> i also love fucking being slick and smooth and, and a ninja in and out so um i daydream about both and they're awesome. both big dreams. awesome awesome so speaking of adcc you know coming up uh, a lot of a lot of hype this year you know everybody who's competing seems to be a star right now you know what um what what are you doing right now in preparation for for this big year to uh to bring home some gold okay for, first of all um holding myself accountable uh you know these you know video watching and tape watching is something that i would always be like yeah you know ugh. and like these game planning conversations get old you know you can talk about fucking fighting forever and then doing these actual drills for 30 minutes after the class is over when you're pissed you know and mm -hmm. taking a turn on a knee because your shot sucks um 30 times after to just lift that foot up faster just things like that i'm, I'm holding myself accountable um the sun's coming up real quick the so i like i think one thing that i'm doing a lot different in in a this ADCC camp is like, I fought a couple champions on the fight to win stage and in the subversive circuit, um, just recently, you know, talking to a couple of people that are competing in it, um, over at high rollers. And, um, I have to raise my own personal bar. I can't come in there the same. I can't be the Brittany Elkin that they expect. I can't come in there with my low shot and think that they're not preparing and want to be a champion too. And, um, you know, I have to be greater. Mm -hmm. than they are so those things are driving me um i'm having conversations i don't want to have i'm getting a little pissed about it because i have to face the truth and be like yeah my shots aren't number one i'm you know i'm not number one yet. and um watching videos of you losing is always hard um but facing them 10 times in a row and and then saying that's a tendency i have so those are the the accountabilities that i'm going to make me a better champion and at least my first time going for trials um going to make me be able to do better the next time you know what i mean so yeah yeah and you know grappling is such a great great sport i personally i just come from grappling I, i'm not very sound on my feet or anything like that but that's where the passion stems from me what for you makes grappling so great and you know why didn't you become some fantastic kickboxer you know why did Brittany Elkin become such a great grappler you know I loved striking or it's I I don't know if I love more what the old me used to do I, I've always been my own manager and I kind of just you know when you're learning about yourself you don't really know who the fuck you are you know when you're going through your training you kind of just like, oh, striking's at 3 p.m. and grappling's at 6 p.m. So I'll just hit 3 p.m. And if I'm not tired, I'll hit grappling. And I used to like stack these classes and just kind of think of, of what I needed. And I enjoy striking. I obviously love fighting. Um, I do combat jujitsu. I enjoy things. I just, I just kept on always being drawn to the ground and I just had a lot of success at it. Um, I used to stack MMA and pro comp jujitsu, like back to back to back to back, fight to win, um, Bellator, you know, then we're going to the world and then we're doing PFL and then we're back on fight to win. And, you know, these things. And it just, when I retired from MMA, I just kind of was like, fuck MMA training then. And I just, I made the classes for MMA, but didn't really care about the kickboxing classes. And then I started to just kind of weed it out. And then my goals for the same caliber of champion things just were more relatively reached in jujitsu. So I was just like, this one's big enough. Let's take it. This one's big enough. Let's take it. And um, it just happened that way. I don't think I planned it. 
I hear you. I hear you. And, you know, we talked already about how popular grappling is becoming and how there's, you know, it's a, this year is a big year. What, uh, what do you see as your long-term goals in, you know, in 10 years or five years, even what, what, what are some accolades you want to stack up on your resume before it's all said and done? Um, hopefully in 10 years, I get my black belt. <laughs> um, well, there's been some women that I just haven't fought yet that, that we've known each other for these long times that then you're open to do. And I just want to forever have a champion's mindset of um, recognizing young, passionate hearts and helping them go forward. I mean, there's, you know, old martial artists used to think the old were the wisest, the older martial artists were the wisest. And I just want to be a wise martial artist that gives a, you know, good, good set for the next one. You know, uh, I really, I really have done I have done everything because I do everything I want. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, I don't sit here and like feel like guilty that I missed something because when things like this come up, I say, fuck yes. And I, I just, my pat, my things are just going to keep going. I don't see that stopping. So I, yeah, I'm not missing out on anything because I do everything I want. <laughs> <laughs> so you see yourself, you sound like the type of person that would be like, you know, after you get your black belt, just open up your own gym, teach, have students and uh, live like that, but no. Oh, no, I'll never do that. I just always want to be a student. I, I literally have been oh. asked every coach, my my favorite coach who is in my corner, has been my coach for like six years, Brad Nico Larson, he's out of Denver. Um, he was always like, you can coach, you can train, you can do anything. I never want to coach. I just always want to be a student. I don't, own, I don't passionize to own a gym. I probably am going to own businesses. You're right. I'm going to own businesses and build people in my community up and try to try to hire people that I feel deserve to be there and things like that and build them up and and try to like show the things I've learned but I probably will never aspire to own a gym I'd rather just sit on the mat and disconnect so and anytime you, anytime you have dick that you can uh, put towards grappling it's going to be learning mm -hmm. awesome, awesome I don't want to be I don't want to be an owner yeah, no, I, I know it's a, a completely different lifestyle than being a student and competing because the great thing about grappling now is, you know, with these platforms, you can compete into your older age and, you know, age gracefully in the sport and not like MMA where you have to worry about, you, you know. Let me get my dog. Oh, you're second. good. You're good. Squishy, squish, get over here. Come here. Hi, Roger. I'm on my thing. My, uh, my boss came home. I'm actually at my boss's house in Philadelphia. So. Okay, right on, right on. Well, you know, I don't want to hold you too, too, uh, too long. We're coming up on a half hour anyway. You know, what's uh, what do you want to end with telling the the fans to expect in your next fight with Clarissa Shields? I really do feel that uh, I'm going to be worth watching that night. I I want to be wearing and damning. Um, we're we're going for damage. We're not even, you know, if the submission's there, you obviously take anything you have. But my my word that I keep saying is I want to be damning. And um, yeah, I hope uh, I want to show, show my fucking like art this time. And my dog is attacking my boss one second. <laughs> Stop. 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 but yeah uh, those are those are the things that you can expect of me as a fan um watching i i really really am ready to to give a nice performance um and i've been working very hard so you're gonna expect some i don't know the words for it just expect to be shocked and have uh enjoy the ride because i'm gonna try to ride her out so awesome well i know i'll be enjoying the show we hope to have you back on soon Thank you so much. Have a nice to meet you and have a good night.